Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, one of the apps we've got available in the App Center uh, that's provided by, by us at QNAP, um, and that's the SSD profiling tool over here. Um, this particular NAS that I'm running, in, running it on today is the uh, TS-364 that we recently did a video on. Um, so this unit has uh, two WD M.2, uh, they are the SN700 500GB variants. Um, in the previous video, I had, had the, uh, added the M.2 drives as a uh, SSD cache. Um, when they're in use, you can't run the SSD profiling tool, so I've since uh, removed them from the cache. So if I go to the disk slash VJ board screen, uh, we can see that they've got little purple icons next to them, which down here is indicating that they are free. They're no longer assigned to anything. Uh, which will allow me to run the SSD profiling tool. Uh, and this is a, a performance testing tool for the SSD uh, so that when you use the SSD, uh, one of the questions we will ask you when you're setting up either a volume or a cache is how much do you want to use the SS SSD provisioning for? Um, so this is how much of the capacity are you going to block off for the best performance? Uh, now you may not know that information looking at manufacturer specs, for example, um, if you've read a review on the drives, it might have uh, informed you as to how they best perform in, in which profile. Uh, but we do have the SSD profiling tool so that you can test it yourself. Um, so because the two SSDs uh, I've got are free, not used, I can use them here. I have already generated a report. We'll look at that one in a minute. It takes quite a few hours to run, so I'm not going to run it live in the session. But I'll show you how you create the test here. Um, so in the test here, it's the TS-364. Um, the test I did was in RAID 1, and you'll see that in a moment. So if I go uh, create test, um, it says it's going to run the tool. And there's an option to sort of explain why run this test. It gives you a little overview there that you can uh, pause and read if you want. So it's just letting you know that we're trying to sort of reserve a bit of space off the SSDs um, so that it reduces write amplification, basically. The short of it is it's going to make it faster um, on some SSDs. Now it's more important on say lower cost SSDs. Um, you'll see when I show you the report for the ones I've got in here, um, they're pretty consistent over all space uses. So in, in my um, use case here, I probably wouldn't use SSD over provisioning simply because the performance was almost the same across the board, but we'll show you that in a moment. So I'm going to click next. It asks which SSD you want to test, so you can select just one if you want to, uh, but you will get a more accurate test, uh, but it will take longer if you select all the SSDs, so you can tick the box and select all, and it will auto select a RAID mode for you, so in this case it would do RAID 1, so then you can click next. It wants to know what data size, I'll generally leave all this as default. It gives you an estimated time and how long it's going to take, um, and you can also end the test phase early if, as it starts ramping up, to the higher capacities, um, the performance is just very low on an SSD. When it gets lower, it will stop the test early if you want it to. And you can do it in 5% increments or 10% increments between this 0 and 60%. 60 is the maximum. That's the maximum that we will block off, off the drive. So there's, there's no point us testing 90% because we don't have an option for you to uh, choose that if you wanted to. And also losing 90% of the capacity of the SSD is not very practical in a use case. Um, so it's basically going to tell you what it will do. It's going to fill the SSDs with data whilst measuring the performance. Um, the test time is going to vary depending on a number of factors, these, these figures that you've set below. Um, and also it will vary um, based on the performance of the, uh, the drive itself. So you can click next, confirm everything and click finish and it will run the test. So in this case, I'm not going to click finish, um, but it will give you a warning when you click finish saying uh, warning any data on the drives will be erased by running this test. You have to uh, allow that to, uh, to do that for the test to proceed. But that's how you set up the test. Now, once the test has run, you can come up here and you can view the report. So if I just maximize this, um, this is the report that I did um, using those default settings there. So um, I did the 0 to 60%, 10% interval, uh, half the capacity of the drives was used. Um, and you get this uh, nice little chart here that shows you uh, the performance figures. Now it might look like a bit of a blurry line here. Um, at any point you can untick any of the capacities. So for example, if you don't want to see the results for 0 to 30%, you can just click on those and it removes them from the chart. If you want to monitor each one individually, you can untick all of them and then just tick the one that you want to see the figures for. So over time, how many IOPS, which is inputs and outputs a second, 
um, that you were able to, to get from that hardware. So you can go through and select them. So I'll just select all of them here. Um, at the top here, you've got different ways to view the test results. So you can do IOPS over time, or you can do data written over time. So they'll all have the same um, sort of top level. So that the line that they stop at, because we were testing to 229 gigs, so they will all stop at that mark. But we can see here on the varying tests, which ones were able to get that data written in the shortest amount of time. So we can see that optimally, um, you can see from the table above, that either 0% over provisioning or 40% over provisioning was a pretty good option to get to, uh, to get those numbers. Um, as we scroll down a bit further, we do also have the option for the over provisioning um, evaluation results. So here you can type in the target performance you would like, and it will tell you the recommended one. So if I was to go in here, a target right performance of say 19,000, it's saying that we would recommend you over provision it at the 38% mark. And if we hover over this chart at around the 38% mark, that's where it crossed over from having just under 19,000 IOPS to going just over 19,000 IOPS. So we're able to block off just 38% of the capacity to achieve that. Obviously, we could go all the way up to the 16,000 uh, 60%, sorry, and it would give you um, even more performance. But if you want the best balance for space available for the cache, as well as performance that you're looking to achieve, um, you can give uh, type that number in there and it will give you the thing. Or you can just hover over uh, the chart to find where you need to be. Um, at the very bottom, it gives you the just overall performance of the drives. Um, so it did a, a test of the drives. So it's telling you uh, sort of the read speeds, write speeds, um, the random performance. So that would be the IOPS performance. So it gives you a really good um, indication of the, the hardware as well. And you can also use these sliders here to zoom in as well. So this sort of generally works best from one of the IOPS ones. Uh, so if you want to zoom in on a specific point in the timeline, you can make it uh, smaller so that when it's writing specifically uh, 100 gigs worth of data and you can slide that 100 gigs along the line and you can see uh, how fast the drives perform. But as you can see, most of the drives are fairly in the same window here uh, at the, the, the test. So really, the sign of a good drive is that there's a consistent time. I have checked uh, some sort of cheaper SSDs um, that we have laying around. Uh, I'm not going to shame anybody with which, which ones they are, but um, generally what you'll see with the lower cost ones is that it might start out that it's nice and fast uh, when the capacity is low. As it starts ramping up to being much more full, you'll start seeing that they slow down massively. There's sort of a very clear uh, bend in the curve. If they're pretty consistent the whole way across the test, it's pretty good um, for, the, for the good ones. So like these SN700s, I definitely recommend those. Um, very consistent performance across uh, across the usage of the disk there. Um, and finally, if you do want to export the report for your own use somewhere else, there is an export option up there so you can export that file uh, so that you can keep it in your records if you want to as well. Um, so again, that's the uh, SSD profiling tool. Um, it is exclusive to the QTS operating system. Um, I may do a video uh, another time for QUTS Hero. On, on that uh, operating system, we have a, a different tool uh, fairly similar but it's called the ZFS uh, profiling tool so we'll we'll probably cover that one off in a in a different video um, this particular NAS is uh, QTS only so that's that's why I've run this one here uh, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use it so if you are thinking of enabling an SSD cache or something like that on your QTS NAS um, if you've got the time definitely run this test it's going to tell you the performance characteristics um, of your SSD so that you can get the most from it. Um, so if you were to say, you know, don't block off any capacity and we use the full capacity, if the SSDs went half as fast when they were full um, as the sort of advertised number, um, you're going to get a lot worse performance from your cache compared to if you'd have blocked off, say, 30 to 40 percent of the SSD, the SSDs could be twice as fast in some cases. Um, so in that case, you'd get much better uh, benefit of your SSD cache. Um, okay, so that's the SSD profiling tool on QTS. If anybody has any questions, please do let us know in the comments section below and we'll get back to you as quick as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye.